I'm Gordon Howey, and I'm sitting behind this desk with the President of the United States, one of the greatest presidents in our nation's history, Abraham Lincoln. I'm so glad that we were able to resurrect you, and if you're watching right now, you're about to learn <laughs> some things about this man, his presidency, the founding fathers, and the history of this nation that you didn't ever know. Welcome. <laughs> well, thank you. Some people know it. Because they did it, you know. Well, most of them are dead. Well, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> but I do miss having the music and the food. Can you imagine eating for three or four days at a time and not gaining a pound? It's just wonderful. I can imagine the first part, but not the latter part. <laughs> no, no calories in heaven. Mr. Lincoln, I'm so excited to have these conversations with you, and you're privileged to get in on the first of these little visits with the president. Uh, tell us, what ever prompted you to get into politics to begin with? The, wow, I think the main two reasons were that my mom believed in me, totally, just completely believed in me, and my dad just wanted me to work all the time. I had to, from the time I was young, very small, 70, put an axe in my hands. Very soon I was out working for the neighbors. I'd make 25 cents a day and give it to him, but my mom kept getting books for me. Start with the Bible. And in the Bible, I begin to notice the profound difference between good and evil. And then my folks took me to abolitionist churches, Baptist churches, who hated slavery. And I began to realize that there's something horribly wrong when one man can own another man. It's not, it doesn't sound like the Sermon on the Mount or blessed are the merciful. You know, and that's what really got me going to think about it. And as time went on, I started being able to beat all the other kids up. Everybody was wrestling with me. I was big and strong and I worked so hard that I got very strong. So I kept winning match after match. And then people started asking me to referee their lives and come to me for advice. And then one day I found the entire works of Blackstone in a barrel that I bought for 50 cents. So I got a law school in a barrel. And I thought God sent that to me. Mr. Lincoln, when did you give your life to Christ? I believe it was right after Willie died. I had all, I'd even made fun of the preachers. People, like my kids had gathered around in the neighborhood and laughed. Well, I, I could memorize the, the preachers. And I was skeptical because there was so much fighting between the Baptists and the New Lights and the Old Lights and the Catholics and the Pro Protestants that I thought, I thought it was, didn't make sense. But the more I read the Bible, the more sense it began to make in a comprehensive way. And I know that when Willie died... Now, for some of the people watching, they won't even know who Willie is. Willie was my second son that died. My first one, Edward, died way back in Springfield. My second son, William Wallace, named after the great freedom fighter of Scotland. He died during the worst year of my life and the worst year of America's life. 1862, we were losing, Lee was the greatest general in this war until Ulysses S. Grant just went crazy. But Robert E. Lee was great and we were losing and then Willie died. And I thought about jumping in the river. I, I thought, how can I go on? But then everybody was looking. I would read the Bible and pray and weep and finally I felt like I had the wisdom sufficient to deal with the crisis. And then when we won it as a Nitidum, I promised, had promised God when we win, I'm going to emancipate the slaves because this ain't right. So when we push Lee back out, I said, we're going to free the slaves. I went to my cabinet and said, we're freeing them because I made a promise to God and myself. By that time, I had a personal relationship with God and knew I would be in heaven with him forever, and I knew we were going to win the war. The biggest proof of this came to me as Lee poured in later on after we made the emancipation into Pennsylvania around a little town called Gettysburg. Seward and all these guys came running in just very worried, saying, we got to get ready to, to evacuate Washington because Lee and 70,000 troops were just a few miles uh, you know, north of here. I went into my prayer closet. By this time, me and God were first name basis. And I got down on my knees and I stayed there until he said, you're going to win at Gettysburg. So I went through the motions, but I just did this big smile inside. And I knew we were going to win at Gettysburg and he was with me to the very end. Praise the Lord for that. 
this should intrigue you sufficiently to tune in to more conversations. We're going to have a series of little visits with Abraham Lincoln that are going to enlighten you, inspire you, encourage you, and educate you. Thanks for watching us. Thank you all. God bless you all.